player number one back in the fold. What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? This is Coos. And this is Mountaineer Paul. And we present to you Hoops from the Hills, baby. This is one of those episodes I, I just about thought about wearing my coonskin cap because we got some good news today, Paul. We did? We did, man. And you know what it is? Would you like to know? I'd like to know. Well, so would our listeners. Kirk Creesa, back in the fold. He has made the decision to come back to the Mountaineers to withdraw his name from the transfer portal, play for newly hired interim head coach Josh Eilert, and try to continue what this team has started in the offseason. Uh, they feel like they've got something special brewing there, and he wants to continue that. So, what are your you didn't say. You didn't say interim loud enough to 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 oh, really I, match I didn't, did I? I didn't. <laughs> to really match how big it was on the on the page. Speaking of that, if I was Josh Howard, I'd be a little bit pissed about that. Yeah, I was shocked. But you know, he's probably just happy to have the opportunity. So it was bigger than the Mountain Mountaineers logo. Yeah, yeah. right. Um, uh, my thoughts. Well, <laughs> I'll tell you what, our guard room really needed it. Um Kerr is a big deal for us as far as the flow of the offense. I've said it multiple times. If you need a stopgap guy, if you need a defender, a guy that's going to get that dirty, dirty done, that's Joe Toussaint. If you need a guy that's going to flow the offense and get the ball to the right people, throw lobs to Jesse Edwards, that's Kerr Carissa. And he can stroke it from three. It's a big deal, guys. And it's a positive sign. Some people might say this points to the players having too much control. We can get into that. You guys can dictate how this episode of Hoops from the Hills goes. If you see down in the chat box, there's a thing that says thank you, maybe it says a dollar sign, something like that. You can contribute to the show, whether you want to talk about Khalil Wilkins, if you want to talk about Kirk Creesa, anything in between. Coos and I have you can get you updated on that. No worries, no problem. That's right. Well said, Paul. Right here on the screen right now, I'm sharing with you guys. The tweet put out by Kirk Creesa, oh, I don't know, a few minutes ago, I guess, would be the best way to put it. I don't know the exact timing of it. Here's what he said. Obviously, a photo with he and Josh Eilert, and it says, The support and love that the Mountaineer fan base has showed me and this team in two months is unmatched. I feel so lucky to call Morgantown home. Two years ago, I put my faith in an assistant coach, and we won 61 games together. Now, I am putting my faith back in a coach that put his faith in me. This staff and team are about to do something very special, and I'm so glad to be a part of it. And in yellow, go in gold letters, this one is for hugs. And Paul, I think you and I mentioned something in one of our previous shows about these guys could rally together around this situation with hugs. And Galvanize that them. That could be their rallying cry, man. And they yep. now have something extra to play for in addition to what they already – wanted to play for which is just to win games uh and you know what this could end up being i don't want to say a blessing in the skies but that might not be appropriate but uh, you know it could end up being something that you know gives these guys an even bigger chip on their shoulder and maybe they perform even better because of this who knows i don't think there's any doubt about it uh i think this will galvanize this team tucson and, and mitchell be damned uh, not really be damned, but I mean, as far as them not being on the team, that be damned, you know, because I think this team can win without them. Don't want to win without them. Would love to have them. They're both huge pieces to this team. And I think Joe Toussaint realizes he could start most places. And, 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 and you worry about him going down to Manhattan and, and talking with Jerome Tang and those guys. I, I'm sure he's a hard, hard guy to say no to, uh, especially what a smaller guard and Malik Noel just did there last year. Uh, Joe Toussaint would probably be, could probably be convinced to come to Kansas State or a place like that. And then, of course, Trey Mitchell, they had him to Kentucky before you could spit. Uh, and obviously, Kentucky is one of the four major blue blood programs in college basketball. And anybody that can wear that on their chest that's not, you know, that didn't grow up loving West Virginia, probably would like to try that. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, for those of you who don't know what Paul was referring to there, and I guess you kind of 
can probably figure it out, but Joe Toussaint has a visit scheduled to Kansas State this week as well as Texas Tech, if I'm not mistaken. You and know. Trey, has, Trey is actually probably at Kentucky as we speak. I know he uh, – I think he started his visit yesterday. So uh, – but here I want to address this comment by John Christofik. I th- and, John, I apologize if I got your last name wrong, man. Uh, but it says, why would Rim Baker hire Josh Eilert to be the interim head coach? He has no head coaching experience. Well, I'm going to attempt to answer that, and then I'll, if Paul wants to chime in, I'll let him. But here's what it boils down to, John. He didn't have much of a choice. He did go after some outside candidates, but those were limited for multiple reasons. Number one, it's June, and majority of coaches, and Hoppy Kirchival talked, and I didn't get to see the episode yet, but Paul and I were talking about it off air. Hoppy Kirchival talked about this today on their emergency episode of Three Guys Before the Game. Most coaches do not want to leave their team right now. They're, they're preparing for the season. They're in the middle of summer workout, summer conditioning. Some of them are even playing, you know, preparing for overseas trips just like West Virginia is doing, things like that. It's not. It's a terrible time to try to hire a coach. A lot of coaches didn't want to do it. He did reach out to coaches, and then there were a lot of other, other ones that also had really big buyouts that West Virginia didn't want to have to pay. That We obviously know that's an issue, regardless of what school you're, you are. And then when he did, they were this close, guys. I don't know if you guys realize they were this close to hiring John Beeline. Like, the deal was verbally agreed to. Basically, and then when players started entering the transfer portal because they didn't want Beeline or anybody else for that matter, other than their guys, Eilert or so somebody, he decided not. To, he didn't want to do it. Now there were also some other details involved. I don't think they could come to terms on maybe a length of a contract as well. That's something I've been hearing. But John Beeline was this close, so it ain't. It wasn't really their first choice, John Christophic. It was. He kind of had to in order to keep the team together and also in order to get a coach in place as soon as possible. Yeah. That and was long. I know it was a long <clears throat> answer, but uh, <clears throat> Paul, I'll let you answer this one. Ren Baker could have hired Ron Everhart to be the coach. Ron Everhart has had coaching experience. You want to explain that? Right. Well, I want to talk about the Eilers situation a little bit yeah. too. Yeah. Uh, just to get back to that really quick, because I think that answered both of these questions anyway. The reason it was Eilert, not Everhart, is because at a chance meeting in the office at Kansas State when Bob Huggins took the Kansas State job, he met Josh Eilert, liked him so much that he hired him, and for the past 17 years, probably plus, he has been on this staff at the shoulder, at the end of the bench, and at some points, neck the chair over, but one of the last two seats on the bench beside Bob Huggins for multiple years now. And so he's been able to witness Bob Huggins perform at the highest of levels in his job duties for 17 years. Every coach has to attempt to be a coach at some point. This is Josh Eilert's turn. Not every coach can start where Ben, where Ben, Howell, what's his name? Ben Howell. Uh, ben Howell is. Not everybody can start a Division Two. Not everybody can start at JUCO. So, Eilert is going to get his shot very kind of in a very similar way to how they mentioned on three guys to uh, a Joe Missoula. Kind of goes, you know, he did coach at Fairmont State for a bit, but it's a very expedited thing. You know, most guys don't go jump right into a head job like this at a power five university, but there's a lot of people that are really, really have a lot of faith in Josh and and think that he's built for this, that he's, he's a no nonsense kind of guy and that he can get this done. And like we said, he sat right next to on the bench for almost 20 years, one of the best ever do it. So he saw it be done. Great answer. The day to day operations he's been doing anyway. Literally, all we're talking about right now, guys, the only thing that he hasn't done that a head coach would do is stand up and direct, basically be the orchestrator of what goes on. And even that can be delegated. Huggins had his had his uh, rotations delegated for years now. He, you know, So these guys have been really picking up a lot of what Huggins didn't want to do or the parts of coaching he didn't like for a long time now. 
Absolutely. These guys are prepared for it. I think so, too. And and I, somebody put in the chat, Tommy Lloyd, to their knowledge. And, Tom, Paul, I don't know this. You might. Was Tommy Lloyd at Arizona? Did he have any head coaching experience before he took that job? He, no. No, no. And Kirk Reese had just referred to him in his, in his tweet. He took a chance on Tommy Lloyd, who had never had any head coaching experience. He's doing the same with Josh Eilert. And I think it's worked out pretty good for Arizona so far. They've won 61 games in two years. All right. Thank you to Jacob Yoho, man. $2 Super Chat. He says, let's go, Josh. Thank you, Jacob. If you guys want to be like Jacob, drop a Super Chat in there. We will gladly show it on the screen and read it. And uh, also, the money will go to support the show right here at Hoops from the Hills, baby, as Paul likes to say. Bass Hunter says, thank by God, thank by God, West Virginia. It is Josh E. and not John B. Josh is going to be special. I hope you're right. Uh, Bass, Bass Hunter, I really do, man. I want to go up here. Our good friend Jordan Cruz is on here. Jordan Cruz has a show called Country Roads Webcast. Most of you guys may be familiar with it. If you haven't subscribed to that, go do it now. Great content over there. Covers the West Virginia Mountaineers, both football and basketball. It says, Creasa was the main one I was most concerned about getting to return, to be honest. I'm a big fan of Kerr's. Wow, too, that's Jordan. a bold statement. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think of the three. Obviously, Paul knows I'm a big fan of Trey Mitchell. I seem to be in the minority on that. Most fans seem to be like, ah, let him go. Uh, But I do think there are players as good as him we can get out of the portal. So it's not that I think losing Trey Mitchell would kill this team. But I do think my fear was Joe and Kerr both being in the portal, both of our point guards being – I just wanted at least one point guard to come back. That was my biggest issue. Uh, They both bring different skill sets to the table, like Paul mentioned earlier. I don't want to rehash that, but uh, but I do. I I'm excited about Kerr because I've never got to, got to see him play in a mountain uniform, and I want to. That's that's the biggest thing for me. Uh, and, and he's got that moxie, that it factor, that confidence, a little bit of cockiness to him, kind of like Eric Stevenson had. And I think mm-hmm. he'll be a great, great, uh, and and fun. I think he's going to be a fun player to watch as well for the Mountaineers. I agree. Yeah, he he like you said. He's a guy that led the Pac-12 in assists. Um, that's a major, you know, that's a major conference, guys, that plays really good basketball. So I think, you know, he's a guy that in order for us to have flow in offense, like I said earlier, but where many people in here, he's a guy that runs an offense well. And, and Tommy Lloyd was just quoted not even a couple of days ago. I don't know if he was trying to re-recruit him secretly, but – he was just talking Kirk Risa up just the other day in a press conference, which I think is pretty cool. Yeah, it is cool. Uh, Jared Houghton says, Mulcahy for Toussaint. Love you, Joe, but I'll take it. Be great if we can get Mulcahy. Somebody was asking about him earlier, and also I had somebody tweet me and ask me about uh, uh, Yetna, Alexis Yetna. Uh, what are you hearing about Alexis Yetna, Paul? Have you heard anything? Haven't heard. Any haven't heard. I haven't heard much on Yetna. Um, I did ask a source right before we came on the show, um, and and they're still actively pursuing them. But Paul Mulcahy, which I've got on the screen right there, I was prepared to talk about him. Is a guy that okay? I've I think I've broken I broke down I've broken down his skill set on this show before, but let me reiterate: he's a six seven point guard that likes to back down smaller guards, which is pretty much every guard is very crafty, has a really nice skill set and think Sean, think Sean McNeil. That's the kind of stroke he's got. So he can shoot it. He he can, he's not Joe Toussaint as far as getting to the rim as crafty as Joe is, but he has other ways of doing it. And he's really good in the pick and pop game. He loves to come off pick and rolls and throw the one-handed passes. He does those quite often. And he's another guy that's really good at setting people up on lobs and, and out-of-bounds plays, anything like that. He, he, he would come right in and challenge Kirk Carissa for that number one spot. That's how good he is. Now, obviously, this coaching staff is really fond of Kerr, and maybe he's already locked that up. But now we've got a two-spot that's kind of wide open after you talk about rake one battle. So it was a name that we had nobody's mentioned a whole lot here. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm so excited about battles this upcoming year. I think he's got a chance to be 
the best player on this team and one of the best in the Big 12. Yep. Uh, and Chris, Krista Sasan, what happened? Oh, never mind. Krista Sasan, I'll to answer your question real quick, and then I'll get to the Super Chat. Uh, who can take Trey Mitchell's place in the portal? That would be uh, Alexis Shetna. Alexis Shetna. Shetna. Yeah, he's, he's also a four. He's out of Seton Hall, transferring from Seton Hall. And he's more of a back-to-the-basket guy, more so than Trey is, where Trey's more of a shooter. But he can play – but he is a four, and he can he can play that spot. So, if we can get Alexis Shetton in here, I don't think we'll take that much of a – if any, actually, of a downgrade at that position. Well, he's a better rebounder, and he's a better scorer back to the basket. And he has shot at times in his career 35% from three. Right. So, he, he can do everything Trey did. And he's a better rebounder. So, not saying he's a better player or anything like that. Trey has more skill, but this kid works his tail off. He averaged seven rebounds a game and didn't even start last year. Right. Jacob Yoho, another $2 super chat, my friend. We thank you very much for your uh, support, man. He says, my question is how many wins to keep Josh? As big as that word interim was, and as much as I think <laughs> West Virginia wants – let me back up a minute. As much as Gordon Gee wants to distance them from Bob Huggins, it's probably going to take something like a Final Four run or something similar to keep him. But, and I don't want to get too far off into the weeds on this, but that's assuming Gordon Gee's the president when next season's over, which is a whole other discussion uh, that we don't really need to get into right here today. But uh, I know Paul's planning a video on that on his Mountaineer Paul Talks football channel as well. But, yeah. uh and John Kelly, want to give him some love. He's been with us from the beginning. He says, Joe seems to be exploring the other two Big 12 schools, similar to Bridges when he went to Baylor. Yeah, that's, that's a little disheartening. I hate to see that. But, you know, Joe's got a right to explore whatever schools he wants to explore. Uh, I think players should have that right to go where they want to go if they're in the portal. I don't think teams should try to hold them back. But I don't want to, you know, it would suck to play against him. I'm still holding, out, like hope he, I'm still holding out hope that he comes back, though. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Alexis Yetna was named the AAC Freshman of the Year in 2019 and is a guy that averaged nine and a half points and 7.3 rebounds a game, shot around 46% from the field. So this was before he went to Seton Hall, but he was injured for a year there. And then during the year he was trying to come back last year, he posted similar numbers in limited time. Tim Treff says, go PowerCat. K-State's YouTube channel. I'm very familiar with that show, by the way. Tim Fitzgerald, I think is his name. Has a great story on Josh. Spoke very highly and had a very positive story on Josh. Uh, could be. I'm not sure how that – anyway, I get the point. Uh, I'll have to go check that out. Maybe even maybe we, maybe we can even have Tim on the show. Paul, what do you think? It would be great. I'll reach out to Tim see if he wants to come on. That would be cool. If you're not subscribed to Hoops from the Hills, guys, we ask that you hit that subscribe button. It is free. We love having all 105 of you in this chat room right now. There's a good chance that not all of you are subscribed to Hoops from the Hills. We've been talking a lot of West Virginia Mountaineers because, honestly, that's been the biggest story in basketball for the last week, what's going on in Morgantown. And our show has seen quite a bit of growth as a result of it, if there were one positive for Coos and I. We'd still probably rather have this situation not happen. But all of you guys in here, we would really appreciate if you could subscribe to the channel. We love having you in here. We want to great build a great community for, for us to talk Big 12 basketball, college basketball in general, and specifically with a Mountaineer slam if we can get it. Drop a comment below if you're watching this after the fact. If this is after the live is over with and you're watching mine and Coos's ugly mugs on the screen, Hit drop a comment below and tell us how pretty or ugly we are. And don't forget to like the video, guys. The likes obviously help feed that algorithm. Get this video out to a wider audience of people. You hear it in every video you see. But it's true. you got to like it to get views and for people to see it. It's just it is what it is. Yeah, there, we got 101 people on here and only 33 likes. So, guys, it only takes a second. Uh, if you're watching on a phone, it's a little bit a little irritating. But you can just X out of the X out of the chat room real quick. Go hit the like button and then come right back in. Uh, I wish they'd make it a little easier to do it, but right now that's that's how it works. But anyway, uh, 
Jordan Cruz again. Finally, oh, finally crossed one K last night myself. Congratulations, Jordan. Uh, I know you put in the work, man. Uh, I know you put in the work and you deserve it. Heck yeah, man. Uh, Civil Mark says we are only night. I didn't even know that we're only nineteen away from one thousand. Wow, we are. Yeah, I, we're only I, nineteen I, away from. I, I had not checked it today, so I wasn't aware. Hey, we're only 19 away from 1,000. If you're one of the people in here that hasn't subscribed, please get us to 1,000 while we're doing this live. That would be terrific. Yes, sir. Get them hyped up for us, Jordan. Do it, baby. I like this baby. question right here, man. If I'm a big sure, fan. Yeah. If Trey's for sure gone, it would be awesome to see if we could flip Olivier Kamwa to WVU or even get Grant Nelson to flip to WVU. That would be a, hey, why not? Any of those guys. Why not? But I'm a big Kamwa fan. I thought he was, in my opinion, he's not, he might be the best four that's hit the market. I love his skill level. I love it. He, he is such a good back to the basket scorer. He can score over either shoulder and can pull up from, from from behind three point line and, and shoot. I think it was right on 34%, but still good enough. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Uh, come on, guys. What, what else you want to talk about? We got uh, everybody giving Jordan congrats in the chat room. He, man, I'm telling you guys, you don't realize the content he's putting over there. He, he keeps up. He does the best job I've seen of anybody keeping track of West Virginia's roster. He tracks every portal addition, every portal subtraction, every recruit. <laughs> Uh, he has a spreadsheet he puts together, man. He puts in the time and the work. Uh, and, guys, by the way, uh, we had reached out to Ethan Bach. Ethan, we're hoping Ethan will be able to join us here at some point in the show. And that would be a really good time because I'm running out of things to say. <laughs> but, uh, but no, it would be cool if Ethan could join us. Uh, we weren't sure if he was going to fit into his schedule or not, but uh, we did send him the link to the show. So, uh, so, yeah, he may jump on here in just a minute. Let's hope so anyway. Uh, Liam Wright says, do you think Huggins has actively been talking to the players still since he resigned? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think it's pretty much been uh, reported now by Hoppy Kerchival and by Mike Casaza at 24-7 Sports. Bob Huggins has had his hands all over this situation, for better or worse, yeah. uh, this whole time. So. Yeah, uh, he's our biggest advocate right now, guys. Whether you like it or don't want to believe it or not, he is going to use that to try to get Eilert over the hump, you know, because he's going to obviously, that's his guy. He's going to try to help Josh succeed. And, and I uh, and I just saw that comment. It threw me completely off. <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, as far as hugs, I mean, there's a report out there right now that Hugs was a big reason for Kerr Creesa and his decision to come out of the portal. As we know, and Kerr has made it basically known to everybody that Bob Huggins, he's the biggest Bob Huggins fan you could ever have. So, yeah. Let me tell you, Beat you to what, it, Curtis. <laughs> let me tell you guys what is, I guess it's a rumor. I don't know that it's been substantiated, but there's a strong belief. Okay, is, is the way I'll say it. There's a strong belief that Bob Huggins could actually end up being our head coach again after this coming season. So take that for what it's worth. Uh, maybe if, I don't Gee, know, if Gee's not in the picture, if Gee's, if Gee's not the president anymore, Huggins could potentially get his job back. If, if he does what he's yeah. supposed to do with the sensitivity training, if he goes to rehab, some things like that, <clears throat> he may he may get reinstated as coach. Uh, we got a super chat here, but I want to get to this one comment real quick. Uh, yes, I did see the picture of Mo Wagi or the video of Mo Wagi, Josh. And Italy is still, the Italy trip is still happening, Billy. I saw uh, Josh Eilert on his Twitter last night mention the Italy trip in his, in his tweet that he put out after he was announced. So that Italy trip is still going to happen. And I think it's massive for this team and even for him to get, he's going to have those games in Italy to, to coach this team up. And uh, that'll be, Extremely valuable when they start the season, in my opinion. Uh, Toby Smith had expressed interest. That's interesting. Very interesting. Huh. There's a blast from the past. Yeah, really. All right, let's get to this super chat. Big Aaron, thank you for the super chat, my man. He says, just joined in. Thanks for the coverage all week. You're welcome, man. That's what, we're, that's what we do. 
Yep. We try our best. We love this this school, this team, this state. So, and obviously, a new story like this, I mean, you can believe it or you can't, but I, I would say 16 to 17 hours a day, I was refreshing my phone, talking to different sources that I have and worked really hard to make and recording videos about it. You know, I mean, I literally completely was completely ensconced and obsessed with this story for a week straight. And had it gone to a month straight, I would have woke up every day and done the same thing. Just if you're like us, if you're a West Virginia University super fan or a nut or have some kind of obsessive compulsive disorder when it comes to this university and this team, football, basketball, women's basketball, baseball, rifle, whatever it is, you're in the right spot. Absolutely. Greg Songer. This comment I like, he says, no one has hardly said anything about all the guys that came off the bench last year. What is going on with them? They showed a lot of promising potential. Yes, and you know what? I, I admit we have been guilty of, of kind of neglecting to talk about those guys. Uh, number one reason is, let's just be frank, uh, majority of fans want to hear about the transfer portal guys. That's just what, that's what people find more interesting. Uh, but, I did see a picture of – once the Hugs thing happened, I saw a picture of Kobe, – Kobe Johnson posted a picture of him and Hugs together on the court, and Hugs had his arm around Kobe. Uh, Paul, did you see that picture? I did. Yeah, so that's one thing I did see uh, throughout this thing. have not seen or heard anything from Seth Wilson or a Conquo or any of those guys, but as far as I know, they're – I mean, well, I know they're still on the team. They've been – they've showed pictures of those guys still working out together, still practicing together, so – Hey, they're still a massive part of this team, and are going to be expected to step up and and be vital vital contributors this upcoming season. So, uh, the only thing I've seen from Josiah Harris was a question about he was looking for a food spot in Morgantown or something. So, uh, I thought that was kind of funny. Uh, typical college student, right? He's not worried about it. I just need something to eat. But uh, but yeah, those guys are going to be vital parts of this team, no doubt about it. And they probably haven't been given the the respect they deserve. They've been loyal through this whole thing, man. They really have. <clears throat> Jordan says sometimes he wish he cared less. You you and me both, buddy. Josh says if we miss out on Joe and Mulcahy, what other guards could we possibly be looking at? Appreciate you all and enjoy the show. Um, yes. As of in the portal right now, is that what he's asking? That's the way I interpret it, yes. Okay, there's a few guys out there. There's uh, let me try to rack my brain real quick. Josh Ragsdale out of Cal is a highly rated guy, right? Right around three stars in the portal. Paul Mulcahy, obviously a huge deal. T.J. Moss is a guy that's a big name. Jalen Rucker is another guy out of UCF. Um, trying to think of another one. I think I think he went to Florida. Adrian Samuels out of Villanova is another name. I've kept in, kept up with a lot of these guards. Um, unfortunately, I haven't heard about them and their interest in WVU, but these are guards that are all available in the portal right now that I have tried to commit to memory just in case somebody asked that question. Um, but Mulcahy seems to be the front runner right now um, for a West Virginia spot. So I think you know he's by far the best one available. Uh, he he's considered a four star transfer for a reason, so it is what it is. Uh, we'll see what happens. Civil Mark West Virginia says at nine ninety five, come peeps. So we have gotten from what nine eighty one to nine ninety five just since we've been on the air. Could not thank we you need guys. five. Could not thank you guys. We more appreciate that. that. Wow, man. Dwayne Matters. I never there. would have thought so. It'd be really cool if we hit 1,000 while we're on the air, wouldn't it? Uh, Dwayne Matters says, was Jay Koontz retained and his Country Roads Trust allowed to comment on players? I can answer both of those. Jay Koontz will be retained as far as I know. I think the whole staff will be retained. And then Country Roads Trust is not allowed to comment on specific players. The, not that are on the – not as long as they're not on the roster. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Current, current players, correct. Way to, way to specify that, Paul, because I should I should have done a better job there. Oh, you did yeah. a good job. 
But yeah, I mean, it's no different than it's no different than guys if they're being recruited or you know haven't signed yet, they can't be talked about. And it's really no different, honestly. Any job you work, you're not allowed to talk about how much money you make and all that stuff. It's kind of it's really no different than that. It's it's just a you know confidentiality respect thing, maybe more than anything. And and it could be against the rules too. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what the actual rules are, or if it's just a matter of confidentiality. Uh, all right, guys, we're up to nine ninety seven. The countdown's on, baby. Three more. Get us three more. The final countdown. <laughs> That was bad. Sorry. I'll never do it again. <laughs> that Toby Smith comment kind of took me by surprise. I, but I haven't had a chance to watch the Three Guys episode, obviously, so that's – I guess they didn't want Toby Smith. But, guys, I will tell you this. Well, I know there, there's been a lot of talk about boosters. From what I understand, boosters were not an issue when it came to John Beeline. At least that's what I was – that's what I have read. Uh, but the players leaving the team and going to the portal was a problem. Uh, Beeline would have didn't want to get stuck in a situation where he had no ta- had no roster, basically. Uh, not in June. I mean, it's, it's going to be hard to fill a roster in June, right? And then I think, like I said earlier, I think there may have been some disagreements on length of the contract as well, potentially, from what I'm hearing. But uh, but yeah, we were really close to getting him back, which was. And I've heard that not only will Hugs be a, a candidate at the end of this year, that but that Beeline could potentially be a candidate then as well. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. Uh, I don't want to look that far ahead. I want to focus on the season. But and let's be honest, if there's a part of me if we keep talking about these other coaches, isn't it a little disrespectful to Josh Eilert? Maybe, maybe we should uh, let Josh Eilert do his job. And, you know, let, he's the man now. Let him be the man and let him go win basketball games, you know. That's how I look at it. 247 Sports has Trey Mitchell 100% crystal ball to Kentucky. Tampering. <coughs> Oops, did I say that out loud? <laughs> it is what it is, man, at this point, you know. The fact that he left, he scheduled his visit the day he left the portal or into the portal, and he's already yeah. – yeah, it's something's up there. Has to be. We get, we hit a thousand, man. Thank you, Curtis. Hey, man, thank you guys for getting us to a thousand. We really do appreciate that. Now we can really start because you know once you hit a thousand, I feel like people will give you a little bit more respect, and we've really worked hard to get there. Um, not only that, but we can put ads on the channel now, which I'm sure you guys are excited about, but <laughs> we can, you know, we can actually start making a little bit of money on this channel. Um, that makes that, even though we're super fans, just that little extra motivation is a big deal, guys. It really is. Yeah. Yeah. The way YouTube recently changed their policy. Uh, I don't have to tell you guys this. You probably don't care, but at one time you weren't allowed to do super chats or anything until you hit a thousand. Well, they recently changed it to where. You could do super chats and memberships and things like that at 500 subscribers, which is obviously the reason you guys have been able to super chat us the last two last couple shows. But you still couldn't get ad ad money until you hit a thousand. So we've now hit a thousand, so we can monetize. Uh, Paul just recently hit a thousand on his channel. Uh, Jordan hit a thousand on his channel. So we're here to. It's all because of you guys. Hey, us West Virginia fans, man, you guys. You guys are just – you rock. That's all I can know how to say. Uh, you guys are passionate. You love your sports. You love your teams. And you love the rest of us who like to talk about it, uh, I guess is the best way to put it. Mountaineer, man, thank you. He says you guys deserve 10000 Thank you, buddy. We'll get there. We'll get there. We hope to. We hope to get there. We will. I have I have faith. Thank God we kept Kerr. Yeah, big big – that was a big. That's a big deal, man. I really do think it's a big deal. This team can can, uh, and maybe maybe that'll make Trey want to come back. Maybe even Joe. Who knows? I, I don't think Trey's coming back. I actually saw where uh, there was actually some rumors floating out there that Trey was actually considering transferring anyway, even before mm. the hugs thing. Did you had you read that, Paul? I had not, but I don't doubt you that you that you read it. I don't know where it was at, and I don't know the source of it. Uh, 
but I'm like you. I've been looking on so many different places the last week, man, between message boards and Twitter and everything else. Yeah. I've read all kinds of stuff. But uh, I did see that he was – it wasn't a huge shock to see Trey into the portal for, the, for them is, is the way I understood it. Josh says, I think with an outstanding season, battle could be a first-round pick, unreal athleticism. He's definitely got athleticism. He does. He just was really raw when he got to Syracuse and and needed a long time to really get to where he is now. So Nathan says, I think that Josiah Harris could be really good in the upcoming years and maybe even next year if Trey ends up leaving. And then TM Treffs, this is a good comment, Paul. He says, Mountaineer Paul plus Iron Maiden and featuring Coos is Eddie. Run to the hoops <laughs> from the hills. <laughs> I like it, man. That's pretty good. It is good. Pretty good, no doubt. Jared Jared Houghton says, y'all can thank Bob Huggins for 1K. <laughs> nah, y'all are awesome. You know man. what? You're not lying, man. Would have made it regardless. Yeah, we would have, but, man, it, it is nice to get there a little quicker. But Paul and I talked about this the other day, actually. I, It's nice to be able to – you know, get more attention on your show. But as a fan, I'd rather have – I'd rather not have had that happen, you know. I think you mentioned that earlier on. Well, yeah. Guys, if, if you guys want to keep uh, moving this thing in a direction you want, let us know in the comments. John says, can remember the days when WE wasn't talked about on YouTube or very little. It's so cool to have places to go to be updated daily. And you know who, st- who was really the one who started it was Golden Blue Dude, man. He saw that there was no West Virginia fans on YouTube, and he wanted. He, he decided he wanted to do it, and then it, you know, he he started it, and then there were a few others that came along. Then Paul and I came along, and there's you know Jordan, and uh, there's a few others out there as well. Uh, you know, Mark Rogers now has the channel over on on, on his network there. Ryan and Rush, channel. Ryan and Rush show. Uh, gosh, there's a bunch. Touchdown City. It's a podcast. Oh, yeah, the Touchdown City show. Obviously, which, you know, the, you got your standard ones, three guys and all them, too. But I, as far yeah. as fan, fan shows, which Touchdown City is kind of, a, I guess you could say it's a fan show to a degree. Yeah, to a degree, I guess you you've right. got You've got the Burning Couch podcast. That's a good one. Yeah, agreed. Did Stevenson get any NBA looks or no? Actually, I'm glad you mentioned that. We should have talked about that, Paul. Eric Stevenson signed a, uh, they call it a two-way contract with the San Antonio Spurs, and he is, uh, well, I don't. let me take it back. I don't know if he signed a contract or not. He is playing for their summer league, maybe. So I guess he did sign a contract. But, yes, he signed with the Spurs. Uh, I'm not, it's a little bit different than the NFL, so I'm not exactly sure how it works, but. Yeah. Uh, and then, and then Oscar Sheway signed with the Pacers, by the way, for those of you who care. Yes, Spurs Summer Squad, you're right. UCF just lost their best guard to the portal. Maybe we can reach out and grab him if Joe doesn't come back. Come on, Jalen Rucker. Yeah, I'm not I'm not sure who I'm not sure his name. That might be the guy he's talking about. Uh Trevor Beresford. Inside scoop. Rumor has it Trey is in Morgantown and announcing he's coming back tonight. I hope you're right, man. I'd love it. I would love it. I can tell you one thing. Stephen and Ford and those folks over at Country Roads Trust are working their tails off to make sure that these guys don't leave because of NIL money. I can tell you that. Yeah. I agree. Braxton well, says, I mean, I was just going to say, I, I mean, according to 247 Sports, he's 100 percent crystal balled to Kentucky. But I'm not saying you're lying. Can you cite a source for that? Peabody Williams said, said the same same thing. Whoever got a good source, Trey will announce his return later tonight. I hope you're right, man. Is this on the message board, guys? Or is this somebody you just know? Yeah, I'd like to know. Because if it's on a message board, we're going to find out anyways. Um, and then, I I mean, 
I, I talk. I mean, I've got. I mean, I've I've got some a couple actual sources, but I don't know if they would confirm that or not. With news like that, they probably wouldn't. You know, that's something they're going to publish before they tell me. So, I like putting this guy's uh, chats up just because of his name. Peabody, Big Dave's fat ass food reviews. What's up, guys? And I hope that's true. Wow. That would be great if Mitchell stays. Speaking of fat ass food reviews, <laughs> I'm going to eat a Kit Kat. I'll celebrate our thousand. There you go. With a Kit Kat. Jared says, hopefully Trey has worked on his hands and ball toughness if he's coming back. Run him through a workout before letting him come back. <laughs> yeah, Paul, Paul and I have talked about that at nauseum. Listen, it's my biggest concern with him. He needs to get stronger and to complement his face-up game because he's a threat in three. But anytime he pump fakes and drives it into the rim, he gets stripped. This is, I mean, I can count at least 30 times, 40 times that happened last year. So frustrating. Trevor says, LMAO, I'm on call of duty with an assistant's son. Interesting. It's amazing where okay. you get information from. Well, Trevor, man, I hope I hope the assistant's son is telling you what, what he's telling you. I hope it turns out to be true, buddy. And comes to fruition. Big Dave said he just tried the churro Kit Kat today, but still can't beat original. Yeah. Hey, have you guys ever looked in Japan and seen how many different Kit Kat flavors they have? They have over 10,000 Kit Kat flavors in Japan. Wow. That's an actual number. They've got, they've got like um, hot Cheeto flavored. and I mean, just anything you can think of. Look it up sometime. Dakota says, give me a break. <laughs> <laughs> Break me off a piece of that Kit Kat bar, baby. Is this what we have devolved into? Apparently. Jared says, my daughter could pickpocket him, talking about Trey. He's he's weak when it comes to that, but he's better than anybody else we got to four. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm uh. I'm going to reach out to one of our sources, Paul, and see if he's heard anything about that, by the way. Or have you already done it? About Trey? Yeah. No. Oh, shoot. oh, yeah. I'm sorry. You did? I'm so sorry. He said he would be shocked about Trey. But, oh, okay. Okay. But, I mean, if this news is recent, I mean, this is a very fluid situation. A phone call that happened while we've been on here right? for 45 minutes could have changed it, you know, while he's in Lexington, which by the way, has a lot of tornado warnings and stuff going on right now. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't even know that, but so calls and prayers to those people, man. I hope everybody stays safe. If any of you yeah. on here are in that area, man, stay safe. Yeah. Indiana, Kentucky, Cincinnati, right. Almost up into my neck of the woods in Southern Ohio. Is all it's a little precarious. Let's get some more of these comments, <clears throat> guys. If you want to be part of the show, you know how to do it. Just comment down below, or you can hit the button that says "Thanks." Super chat button always helps. Either one. Well, guys, basically, just to, for those of you who may have got on here late, we'll recap what we started the show with, basically. Uh, probably a good idea on these longer shows so, we, so the people that get on here late know what, know what we talked about. Kirk Creech yeah. has announced uh, via Twitter that he is coming back to West Virginia. I will share uh, the tweet once again. He said, obviously, a picture with him and new, newly, uh, new interim coach Josh Eilert. It says, the support and love that the Mountaineer fan base has showed me and this team in two months is unmatched. I feel so lucky to call Morgantown home. Two years ago, I put my faith in an assistant coach, and we won 61 games together. And he's talking about Tommy Lloyd, by the way, the coach at Arizona who had no, to my knowledge, had no head coaching experience before he got that job. He goes on no, to say he that. Sat 
He goes on to say, now I am putting my faith back in a coach that put his faith in me. This staff and team are about to do something very special, and I'm so glad to be a part of it. And he ends it with, this one is for hugs. So, And back to my earlier point. Um, so who did Tommy Lloyd sit at the end of the bench or right beside on the bench for all those years? It's a coach that is – you could, I would say, you would put him in the same class as the Hugs. That's Mark Few. So he learned from Mark Few for all those years, got the job. He was an assistant just like Eiler, got the job at Arizona and then won 61 games. So it can be done. Chris Gerald says talking about Trey frustrating you when he drives, driving brings back flashbacks of Issa Ahmad. I've heard other people say the same thing. Press conference tomorrow at three with Coach and Rim Baker. That'll be, that'll be great. Uh, hopefully, we can you know do do a show on that at some point if if there's anything comes out of that that's noteworthy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it could just be shaking hands and kissing babies. Yeah, it could be. I thought of a name for our game when we play Houston in football, and that is the Moonshine and Red Bull Revival game. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Oh, that's that's funny right there. I like it. I like it a lot. All right, guys. Listen, uh, we don't have a whole lot else for you guys. Uh, you know, if there, Paul, is there anything you else you want to say before we wrap this thing up? Thank you for getting us to a thousand while we've been on here. Uh, it means a lot. And and yes, we appreciate you guys for sticking with us all week while we tried to cover the situation that has now gotten a resolution. We can keep a couple of these guys that are in the portal. The only thing that's changed is Bob Huggins, which is a big change. But for all intents and purposes, we can still get excited about this roster. And I think that's important to point out. Keep in mind, guys, though, tampering does happen. And these guys all have right around 20 more days left to with the opportunity to enter the portal. And so... Tampering happens. Just be on the watch. Somebody may slip in. Could be a backup. Could be an Oconquo or a Wiggy. Not saying I have insider knowledge of that. Just saying expectations can lead to resentments. So try to keep everything level-headed and stay in the moment. And let's support Josh Eilert and his staff and his team uh, this season. And, uh, you know, like just like we would if Hugs was over there, you know. That's that's what I that's what I plan to do. Same here. But uh, thank you, Jordan. Congrats to you too for hitting that one K too. I didn't realize you had hit it already, man. But that, great job. Great Guys, job. That's a that's about all we have for you. Uh, we've talked your ear off long enough, but uh, we just kind of wanted to get on here and give you our thoughts on the Kirk Reese and news. Hopefully, we'll hear more news later on about Joe and about Trey as well. They can get the band back together and. Uh, have everybody ready to go? No, 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 no. Have this, have them ready for this trip to Italy coming up here in a few weeks. But with that being said, guys, we appreciate you tuning in. Thank you for getting us to a thousand. We thank you for the super chats. Thank you for all the comments. Thank you for the likes, the, you know, all of it. We thank you for everything. Uh, with, with that being said, guys, we'll see you on the next episode and we are out.